Hi guys, Anna is here and in this video we'll be discussing the process of DNA replication and Meselson and Stahl experiment. So all the details you need to know to get top grades in your biology A level. Grab a piece of paper so you can draw with me and without further ado, let's get into it. So why do we bother learning about DNA replication as a process? It's essential to know this as a part of the cell cycle. So just as a quick overview of the cell cycle is that we have several stages in that. So we start with G1 phase, we start with, then we go into S phase, G2 phase, mitosis, and then remember cytokinesis is a separate stage to mitosis, which is commonly mixed around. So DNA replication specifically occurs at the stage of S phase. And this is quite a common question in exams, so you guys need to know this. And it's at this stage that the DNA is doubled. As a cell, you want to double the DNA before mitosis and meiosis, before it's divided into two. So we pass the correct information onto the next generation of the cells. So let's get here into the process. I love drawing doodles for this topic. So if you just draw a DNA molecule as two separate strands, please, and just as a reminder, DNA molecule itself is two meters long in each cell. Yes, guys, it's two meters long in each cell. And in the other video, I'll discuss how is that possible and how we condense DNA in our nucleus, in eukaryotic cells. But so if you draw a small piece of fragment of DNA, you can see I've just randomly added nucleotides. They're supposed to match, but we're just doing this quickly, so it really doesn't matter. But so the first thing to do, guys, is that the DNA needs to unwind and we need to break the hydrogen bonds. So this happens by an enzyme called DNA helicase. Easy to remember because DNA helicase, it's H for H. So for exam, you could say that it unwinds DNA and breaks hydrogen bonds between two complementary strands of the DNA. We now go on to the next stage. We, I've represented two DNA strands separated with no hydrogen bonds now. And then we have another enzyme that will come and synthesize the complementary copy of DNA. Remember, two strands are antiparallel, so it means they have the direction. So five to three, and then five to three going the other way on the bottom strand. And the other enzyme that you need to know is called DNA polymerase. Remember, guys, DNA for um, DNA replication. So if the final product is DNA, then you have to call it DNA polymerase. RNA polymerase will come later in the course when we discuss transcription. So DNA polymerase works in five to three direction. And this is what you need to know so far, guys, in A-level. It will be slightly different if you continue doing biology at university. But for the sake of the A-level, DNA polymerase uses both strands as template strands, and it travels in the direction of five to three prime. And here we're just drawing very, again, quick sketch. They're supposed to be exactly the same, but basically what we've produced are two identical copies of DNA, which are identical to the original copy, uh, a fragment of DNA that we have started with. Okay, and here, here, guys, is the process of DNA replication of what you need to know. So it's two enzymes, DNA helicase, and DNA polymerase. But what I need to give you further is actually the proper definition of DNA polymerase. It's quite a common uh, question that comes up in exams. It's usually a two marker. So just if you could copy this definition for me. So DNA polymerase is an enzyme that joins free adjacent nucleotides by formation of phosphodiester, phosphodiester bonds by condensation reaction. And if you guys can't remember what phosphodiester bonds are, uh, please watch my previous video on the structure of DNA. And voila, guys, this is a two marker question in exam, and I've seen it loads and loads across many exam boards. So make sure to learn this by heart. So guys, let's do a quick overview of what we've gone through. So we started with the original molecule of DNA. I'm a little bit lazy, I'm not going to draw nucleotides here, but just know that we have one, we started with one DNA molecule, and then we've produced two identical copies of DNA. So just kind of each strand within original DNA molecule 
acts as a template strand. So we're using that as a copy for DNA polymerase to produce uh, a complementary strand. So I'm just going to label them here. It doesn't really matter which orientation. And then the second strand is a newly synthesized strand produced by DNA polymerase. So in this case, guys, as you can see, it's half and half. So 50% is original strand, and then 50% of DNA is a new strand. So therefore, in biology, we describe DNA replication as a semi-conservative process. Okay, semi-conservative replication. And this is because a new copy of DNA contains one original strand, which was used as a template, and one new strand. And this is quite amazing, guys, that we can now basically say, okay, well, you know, we know the DNA replication is semi-conservative process. However, somebody had to discover and prove this theory first. And two scientists who did prove this were Messelson and Stahl, uh, scientists from Germany. And basically, guys, whenever you learn about experiments, please just know what is the overview and what of the experiment and what did scientists try to show with that. So in this case, they showed that DNA replication is a semi-conservative process. So what I want you to draw is to draw three test tubes. I always have them funny shaped, so I've just copied and pasted them. So they're all equal, more or less. And this is a good place to review uh, what ultra centrifugation process is, which comes under the cell structure topic. So ultra centrifugation is the process of separating the content of the cell by size, by mass. And so just keep that in mind, write it down the definition, revise it, and then we're going to get on with the experiment. So what they used, Messelson and Stahl here, is they used E. coli, which is a type of bacteria, because they replicate so much, they produce many new cells. So it's very easy, well not easy, but it's very convenient to look at the uh, process of DNA replication because we can follow DNA replicating. And what they did, they grew bacteria on N15 medium only. So N15 is a heavy isotope of nitrogen, so it will have an extra neutron, and that means that the DNA that these cells have are only made of N15. So remember, DNA contains a lot of nitrogens, specifically in the bases. So what I would highly recommend, guys, I will explain what the band means in a moment, but please draw the DNA first. So it's made, both strands are made out of nitrogen 15 and 15, and keep it the same color. And then the band in the first tube is going to be there. So it's where we find this DNA that was separated out of the cell after ultra centrifugation. Then they took original bacteria from N15 medium only and transferred it into N14 medium only. So nitrogen isotope of 14 has one less neutron and they've allowed it to replicate for one cycle of, and to go through one cycle of DNA replication. So what I guys want you to do is to separate N15. So we now, both of the strands are used as template strands. And then the second newly synthesized strand comes from nitrogen 14 only, because that's what is available in the medium. And that's what the cell can build the second complementary strand from only. Once these cells were put through ultra centrifugation, then there is a band that is produced in the middle roughly of the tube, but more importantly, this band is higher compared to the uh, other tube. And this is, guys, because the lighter the content, so less mass, it means it's going to be more to the top. Okay, so then let's take these cells again. So they were allowed to f uh, replicate for the first cycle of replication. We are now going to let them replicate for the second cycle. And again, guys, so first of all, draw your original strands. So remember, in this case, one original strand is going to be N15 and the second strand is going to be N14. But because the cells are still in the N14 medium, the second complementary strand is going to, strands are going to be only made from N14. So you get now, guys, two different types of DNA molecule. And because of that, you now produce two bands in that tube. And which one of them? So you're going to have N15 and N14, same level as from the second tube. 
and then the top band is going to be N14, N14, because it is the lightest. So notice how I've drawn the bands in the third tube slightly thinner, and it's because we've separated them into the two types of the DNA, so there is half less of those, both of those. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and this is a summary now of everything you need to know for DNA replication together with Messenson and style experiment. Please subscribe to my channel, press a thumbs up, and in my next video we'll be discussing transcription and other topics you need to know for your A-level biology course. If there is a particular topic that you really want me to cover sooner than later, then please let me in the comments below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!